have just left Palencia behind. I am now in Lyon. I'm a Leo entering Lyon during the time of Leos. This could be trouble. After entering the province of Lyon, I soon encountered the halfway point. 250 miles down, 250 miles to go. The first town I entered was Sahagun. One of the sites I visited was the ruins of an old monastery, Monasterio Real de San Benito, built in the 12th century. Another marathon day, back to back. But I'm looking forward to it. Coming out of Sahagun, the Camino stayed next to the road for the next two towns. In Bursianos del Real Camino, I stopped for my first breakfast at Bursianos 1900. It's 8.30 in the morning and I'm having a beer. I have no idea why, but my wife put it on the schedule and said I have to have a beer at this particular spot. In this instance, my wife failed to realize what time I would reach this destination. In Burger Ranero, I stopped for a more serious breakfast at La Costa del Adobe. The next stretch was a solid eight miles to Religos. After 23 miles, I arrived in Mancia de las Mulas, a walled town on the banks of the river Esla. The town has its origins in the ancient Astarica region, or even before. Following my normal routine, I checked into the hotel, did laundry, and then took some time to update my blog. Mancia de las Mulas was a great town to explore, and the city walls date back to the 12th century. From the Romans in the 1st century, the Goths in the 6th century, and the Arabs in the 7th century, Mancia de las Mulas changed hands many times. The town had a really cool medieval feel to it. I was real excited entering Lyon, passing over the bridge and seeing the city spread out before me. The city of Lyon is the capital of the province of Lyon. Founded as a military encampment in 29 BC, Lyon is ancient. The Lyon Cathedral, a centerpiece of the city and a masterpiece of the Gothic style, was consecrated in the 13th century. Altogether, it was a great city to explore. In 1188, Lyon hosted the first parliament in European history. Convent de San Marcos, otherwise known as my hotel. I stayed at one of the most spectacular hotels along the Camino. The Parador de Leon. Although extremely pricey by Camino standards, it was well worth it. After settling into the hotel, I explored the Convento de San Marcos, a 16th century Gothic church. Since Leon is known for its tapas, I then decided to do my own little tapas crawl. The 
The city was very festive at all hours of the day and night. Checked out of the Parador Hotel in Leon. It's right there behind me. Amazing experience. Love the hotel. It's a luxury hotel, so got pampered a bit. And uh, also love the city of Leon. So every time you buy a drink, you get a tapa. So, you know, I had to have a couple beers because I wanted a couple tapas. And uh, it was a lot of fun, very enjoyable great time I'm leaving a little late today but you know I got nowhere to go I'm going to a small village so I'm gonna take my time have a great day Every day on the Camino, you have a great deal of time to think and reflect. I walked a little slower on some of these shorter days and really took in my surroundings. The villages I passed through were small and generally quiet, with few people on the streets, if any. Later that evening, I arrived at Villar de Mazarif. The village has its origins as a pre-Roman settlement. At the end of each day, exhaustion set in, and part of me just wanted to lay down and relax, but I always pushed myself to get out and explore. Villar de Mazarif, walking 19 miles to Astorga, and I hear great things about Astorga, so I feel like this is going to be another great day. The sun should be rising soon. Let's go. I am breaking personal shadow records today. The casino can be lonely at times, but the scenery always brightened my mood. And knowing that there was always another spectacular sight just ahead, there was always reason to keep going. Puente de Orbigo is a thousand year old bridge, first constructed by the Romans. Walking over it, it was incredible to think about just how long it's been there. I'm at the cross overlooking Astorga. What a beautiful sight. I always love entering these large historic cities. Beginning in 275 BC, Astorga came under the influence of the Celtic people. The Romans later conquered in 14 BC, and the city became known as Asterica Augusta, now known as Astorga. Oh, 
home to the Palace of Gaudi, Astorga is one of the coolest places in the province of Lyon. Gaudi architecture represents human imagination at its finest. Antony Gaudi, born in 1852, was a Catalan architect from Spain. He was known for Catalan modernism. Most of Gaudi's work is in Barcelona, so it was rare to have this opportunity. My hotel was on the main plaza and overlooked the massive Asturias y Romanos festival. An annual festival that celebrates when the town was the Roman city, Asterica Augusta. Right, walking out of the hotel at Astorga. Had a great time here. There was a festival last night, some kind of Roman, Roman party or something. The entire plaza was filled with uh, activity and chants and all kinds of stuff. It's a ton of fun. So, short day today, only 13 miles. So, should be a great day. Every time I left one of these amazing cities, I always wished I had a couple more days to explore. Several hours into the day, I entered the town of El Ganzo, the Goose. El Ganzo may signify the Knights of the Templar legend of the goose that lays the golden eggs. The Mason Cowboy is a Camino famous bar in El Ganzo. It's like bringing me back to the Long Trail days. Ravenel del Camino is a historically important town along the Camino de Santiago pilgrimage. It is the last town before the hard ascent up to Fonsabat. There were references to the town back in the 8th century, but it didn't take on more prominence until the 11th and 12th century due to the pilgrimage. One of the churches I visited was the Nuestra Señora de la Asuncion from the 12th century. I especially liked my hotel, the Stone Boat. Leaving Rabinal del Camino, the first town I came to was Fonsabat. It looked like a great place to stop, but I continued onward toward Cruz de Ferro. Cruz de Ferro is a large cross on a hilltop. For the last thousand years, pilgrims have come there and laid rocks at the base of it. So the tradition is you bring a stone from home or from the beginning of the Camino trek you actually stand with your back to the cross and throw it over your shoulder and that's supposed to signify your journey and your stone itself represents your burdens or sins and you're getting rid of those burdens and sins so i have this rock that i've been carrying with me since st john pete the port and i will be releasing myself of that burden in about a half hour. All my sins and burdens over my entire life. Forgive. There are some magical places on the Camino and Cruz de Ferro is one of them. 
I think that I'm going to hide in some Leaving the cruise, I remained in deep thought as I descended into the surrounding mountains. Never gonna find me. I'm a renegade. Oh, I could be the one who saved you from this hard place. We could be as one and we'll escape. The next town I came to was El Acebo, a really neat looking village in the hills. The next three towns, El Acebo, Rigo de Abros, and Mona La Sica all had the same unique structure style. Stone houses with slate roofs and a large wooden balcony facing the street. It was like something straight out of a fairy tale. A couple hours later, I made it down to Molina Seca. All of these villages had 12th century churches and had a history involving the Knights Templar. I could be the one who saved you from this We could be as one and Molina Seca was a beautiful village, and I wish I had more time to spend there. I can feel it if birds inside Take away the pain, we can go say I can feel it if birds inside but the Camino must go on, so I made my late afternoon push to Pomperado. Trust me, I won't let you down. I just entered Pomperado, and I'm greeted by that huge Templar castle. How awesome is that? Once again staying in luxury, I checked into the AC Hotel by Marriott. Like Lyon, Pomferrato was also populated way back into the BC times. During the Roman period, Pomferrato was the largest mining center of the empire. With its long history and association with the Knights Templar, I could tell I was going to like Pomferrato as well. We could run away, we don't gotta stay I can feel it if birds inside hey, Take away the pain, we can go and say I can feel it if I'm in the castle of the Templars I can feel it if birds inside hey, Take away the pain, we can go and say Trust me, I won't let you down walking out of Palm Ferrata right now. It's 8.30 in the morning, and I know I sound like a broken record, but what an awesome city. I knew it was gonna be, you know, a great experience, great things to see, but I just, I didn't fully understand how spectacular some of these places are. And they're so rich in history, there's so much to see, and uh, I don't know, I'm just blown away. And just so, so grateful. The entire first half of the day consisted of walking along roads off through the Pomperada suburbs. My first stop wasn't until 11.30 a.m., stopping at Venus del Birzo, a winemaker and distributor. I tasted one of their wines and had some potato chips there. I was officially in wine country again. But everywhere I turn, some hearts will break. I stopped again for lunch in the town of Cacabelos at the St. James Way Hostel. There's no need to play pretend. Why don't you stay? Stay, cause I can really use a friend. Stay, please stay, cause my heart really needs a man. Coming into Via Franca del Birzo, I was greeted by a large castle. It was the headquarters for the Spanish Army of the Left during the Napoleonic Wars. 
After checking into the 17th century monastery converted to a hotel, I laid down for a bit as I had a splitting headache for the first time on the trip. But after a short rest, I made sure to get out and explore. Why don't you stay? It's an 18.6 mile day, but I went to sleep early, and so might as well get up and start hiking. Well, this is pretty cool. Walking through a long tunnel in the middle of the street, 5.20 in the morning, and I have no worry about traffic or anything. Kind of creepy. Early on in this day, I got into kind of a funk, but I got over it quickly. I really enjoyed the hike up to O Cerebro. It reminded me of my time on the Appalachian Trail. Halfway up the mountain, I stopped at a great place, Tito's Bar, in the town of La Faba. It was a great place to relax for a bit, listen to Jack Johnson, and talk to other pilgrims. This concludes Castilla y Leon continue on with us to Galicia.